few seconds for I actually start super live. I think so. But we'll ship them UPS anyways, so they can go out at 4 30 today. Okay. But I'm sure we probably already missed post office. And yeah, just double check the measurement on the box. You might need to enter it as like 21 by 21. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 If you and go I'll from three like, inches height to four inches yeah. height, yeah. But those, usually I measure them, and they're usually good. Like, they are three or less. But it's like the 24 usually kind of becomes 25. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, we're live. Uh, you got to just listen to a little shipping talk between me and Gloria trying to decide uh, which boxes to use and how to put the measurements in for UPS. Um, UPS is a stickler. If you say a box is 24 inches wide, I think better be 24 inches or less. Um, so if it's like the tidiest bit over 24, you gotta put it as 25, I know, workshop drama. But um, anyways, happy Friday. I hope y'all are having a great day. Um, I plan to do this at 10. But uh, for those who know me well, I'm not a morning person. And some of y'all are probably thinking, 10, that's not that early. But I had to get up. I had to hang out with my animals. You know, that's always important. Have my latte. Just kind of, you know, move into the day. Um, plus, got stopped by a train on the way here. So I didn't get into the workshop until like a few minutes after 10. So um, me starting at 10 was definitely not going to happen. But... Here I am, 10.30. Um, watch the replay, obviously, because I don't know everybody's available at 10.30 on Friday. Um, but watch the replay and check in with us. We're going to get started on our Freedom and Flip Flops. I don't want to keep y'all waiting. So here is what we are going to be working on. This was our craft kit of the month. So you got this in the box along with paint, brushes, ribbon oh i gotta grab my ribbon well when we get to that i'll grab it um you got the little paint pouches obviously not the full-size paint bottles some gold glitter you got all that stuff so um open your box get everything out and we're going to get started let's see i think that probably looks pretty good for the view <clears throat> There, I'm just checking to make sure this is a decent view of everything. I need to turn up the light a little bit. There we go. All right, still finishing off my latte. Grab yourself something to a refreshment if you're doing this rewatch this evening grab yourself a glass of wine whatever you want cheers all right so first things first we are going to paint this backer white so pull off all your little wooden pieces and you have some pouches of white paint your back is already painted white for you. That's an exterior grade house paint. Um, so this side is ready to go. After we finish painting the front, since we're doing the front with craft paint, you'll wanna spray it with a clear sealer so that yours will be ready to hang outside. So you can just squeeze on your white paint. We'll start spreading it around out of your pouch. 
we're going to use our wood handled foam brush that you get. And if you've done a few of these craft kits of the month, you should have yourself a nice little stash of these so that you don't have to actually use the little sponges I include if you want to use, you know, this on, on all the colors if you prefer using it. Ah, smell of craft paint in the morning. It definitely has a distinct light smell. Oh, speaking of fabulous smells, I don't know about y'all, but I am a stickler for like all southern summer smells. And right now is like honeysuckle blooming. And we got a bunch along the side of a, one part of our driveway. And oh, I walk the dogs out there and it's just like, takes me away. I don't know, I just love some honeysuckle. My husband's out there walking the dogs with me. I'm like, come smell it. He's like, I know, I smell it. I'm like, smell it again. Granted, all those southern smells come with fabulous southern things like gnats and mosquitoes. I guess you got mosquitoes lots more places than just the south, but you got like these big old monster mosquitoes which of course have already started biting. I posted in the group the other day the picture of our new puppy. Oh man, he's a handful. Good thing I love my husband because he wanted this puppy. Uh, I love the puppy too, don't get me wrong. But you know, just like with toddlers, right? You love them, but also, there are times where you want to choke them. My kids are grown now, so they made it through the you want to choke them phase safely. Don't worry, don't call CPS on me. But, yeah, we're working on like the house training thing. I mean, he's a little bit older, but we got him from a rescue and he had been in their shelter. So, you know, not perfectly house trained. So now we're working on that and not jumping on us. And he's just got, oh my gosh, the energy. All right, your edges should have been painted by us for you here in the workshop. You can just double check them while you've got your brush out. But um, it should be pretty much painted. There we go. All right, we're gonna need the second coat. Just go back over it, smooth it out so you don't have any like the big goopy lines. And you're gonna have some lines naturally, but just not like goopy ones, you know, like thick paint. So just smooth it out. And then we're gonna set it to the side so it can dry for a minute. I just wanted to grab something to set my brush on. So if you've got paper plates or paper towels or whatever. The one thing I did say you were going to need to provide for yourself for this craft kit of the month, which is not common that you have to provide something out of the ordinary, but was Mod, Mod Podge if you wanted to use the glitter that we sent you. Um, you can pick this up if you haven't gotten yours already. Um, any craft store, Hobby Lobby, Michaels, um, Walmart craft section. If you have a decent craft section at your Walmart, should have it. This obviously like jumbo size bottle because we use a lot of this um, when we're doing our 2022 graduation signs that are in glitter. So yeah, we've got a lot of Mod Podge. You're just gonna need a little bottle of it. Um, or you can even get it on Amazon. Yeah, so look up Mod Podge even on Amazon. Oop, I'm making a mess. Um, 
and you can order it there and so you could do um, the little glitter stars later. Sorry, my phone keeps making all sorts of noises. I probably should have turned off the notifications before we started. All right, pull out your flip flops. We're gonna paint those gray. So get out your gray. And then just one of your sponge, little paint sponges. with the notifications. All right, so open your little gray paint pouch and then you've got these little, I call them paint sponges. They're actually makeup wedges. However, I haven't needed a makeup wedge in probably a couple decades. Because I don't even know I mean like foundation, I guess. I don't even know what kind of makeup you do this with. Y'all, I am so not a makeup girl. If I try to put on makeup, I feel like like when a little kid tries to use mom's makeup. Like I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just going to smear all this stuff on my face. It's kind of what it feels like. Alright. We got our gray flip-flop bottoms and just spread it out with your nice little paint sponge. If this is your first craft kit of the month, um, you'll notice all of my pieces, like the round we just painted white and the flip-flops, they have the outlines on them for us to help us, guide us to glue stuff on correctly in the right places. Um, at first, when you're painting it, it will feel like, oh my gosh, I'm covering up the lines I'm not going to be able to see where to glue stuff on do not worry about that once it dries you will still see the lines also one other thing because I love the burned edge of all of our pieces um, so if you want to keep that and try not to get paint on it um, just make sure when you're using your paint that you're going out towards the edges and you don't come in from the edge because when you come in it's going to scrape all the paint off your sponge and get it on the outside part there if you're a super perfectionist you can always go back over the edges with a sharpie when you're done a black sharpie um i'm not that much of a perfectionist so i'm just careful when i'm painting to making sure i paint like toward the edges Squeeze too much paint on there, so I'm trying to spread it out. I don't want any blobs. And it's dependent upon your taste, like what you think about the look, whether you're going to want one coat or two coats. Some people are happy with one coat. You see the wood grain through it a little bit more with just one coat. Two coats is going to look a little more solid, right? So you'll make that decision after the first coat dries if you want to do a second coat or not. But I'm trying to do as smooth and as good covering on the first coat as I can in the hopes that I'll like it with just one coat um, and not need a second coat. So, I'm going to set those to the side now. My, my white backer is feeling pretty dry, but I'm going to hold off on its second coat for just like, I'm going to do a couple other things first. Okay, so let's do everything that's going to be blue. So blue for us is the whole word freedom. So pull out all your freedom letters. And then the straps on the flip-flops are going to be blue, and that's it. So 
So grab, you should have four of them. All right, that's everything that's gonna be blue. Of course, this is, you know, based on the picture I did, you know, the way I painted it the first time and the picture I used to market it. Um, so you can obviously switch the colors up if you wanna switch where red is and change it to blue and where blue is, change it to red. All of that, obviously, up to you. So grab one of your other sponges. I like using the skinny end on my sponges. I just feel like I can manage it a little better. And again, as I'm doing this, I'm being careful of the edges. So to make sure I'm painting with the edges or like going towards the edges, but just not against the edges so it doesn't pull that paint off the sponge and glob up on the edges. And you're going to get a little bit that goes over, like even if you're trying to be careful, it's not a big deal. Wipe it off with your finger. I promise you, when you put it on there, people are really not looking at the edges. All right. Oops, leather. And if you're ever curious about the colors, I mean, these are pretty straight up, right? Red, white, blue, gray. Um, but if you ever want to know like specifically which colors I've used, at the bottom of the DIY sheet that I include in the craft kit of the month, it lists the paint colors I used. So and it tells you like the brand too. So like the brand of this blue is different than I normally use Anita's acrylic craft paint. Um, this is a Deco Art like Americana brand blue. I just liked this blue better, and I could get it in a larger bottle then I could get the blue the blue from Anita's that comes in the big bottle kind of has like a purple undertone to it and so for a patriotic one I definitely didn't want any purple undertones I wanted a very solid blue excuse me if y'all hear all my sniffles it's just the allergies you know this time of year I think it happens to most of us. And once I think you know, I'm done with my first coat on these, try to go back over them just to make sure I've smoothed out any spots that might have had some a little bit of creepy blue spots I mean paint spots not blue another thing you want to do you probably don't have a paper towel close by I just use my shirt because it's a paint shirt um, so that you're kind of wiping off your fingers regularly otherwise that wet paint you're going to transfer to other pieces when you pick them up. Alright, so I'm just smoothing it out so I don't have any big old paint spots. I know I've got a lot of people in the group from like all over the southeast and even a few people outside of the southeast. Um, they do have a decent number of y'all because I do enough shows, you know, around, you know, within a few hours of where I live. And I've got a decent number of the DIY divas who are from close to where I live in Cartersville, Georgia, which is like northwest Georgia. But if y'all are anywhere close to Rome, Georgia, and you enjoy baseball... 
You have got to go check out the room braids. We did that last night. It is one of my favorite spring and summer things to do. I just love sports, but I'm not like super connected to like the Atlanta braids, right? Like I just like being outdoors at the stadium. Um, and last night we went, it was our first game of the season that we'd gone to. And it was a fun game because we were down by one run in the bottom of the ninth and one guy on and um, the cleanup batter hit a home run. So, you know, just ended the game right there because it's the bottom of the night. That was super exciting. Thanks, babe. Another latte. And a bagel. Sweet. Look at that. Y'all just witnessed all that sweetness right here. What kind of bagel you give me? It's exactly what I would have gotten myself. Cream cheese and butter. Cream cheese and butter, too. And I'm going to keep him for now. In a lavender vanilla latte from my favorite little coffee shop. What a sweet guy. That was my date last night to the Rome Graves game. We just had a blast. And because it's a minor league team, it is super easy to get in and out of the stadium. You know, there's not like crazy backups trying to get in or out or having to like pay $20 for parking half a mile away. I mean, I know some people love the Atlanta Braves and that's like, great, absolutely do it. And I will go to a game every now and then, but we'll go to like quite a few Rome Braves games. It's just so easy to go and not too extensive we get the best the best seats um in the whole stadium besides a box and they're 15 dollars a seat <laughs> but you can go i think they have like six dollar seats or nine dollar seats or their cheapest ones i mean it's pretty awesome thursday nights was thirsty thursday so they had two dollar draft beers Lenny and Crumb's small cup, of course, but so we had a few of those. Just a great night and awesome weather. So y'all should definitely check out the Rome Braves if y'all are anywhere close to that area. I know I've got quite a few DIY divas who actually live in Rome. Um, all right, I am done with everything that's blue. I'm going to pull back out my round now because it's pretty dry and I'm going to go ahead for my second coat of white and then just move these blue pieces out of the way. All right, so I'm going to grab out our foam brush we were using. This is a good time to make sure your hands are wiped clean or at least the paint on them is dry so you don't end up transferring that blue paint to your white round. All right, so just a little more white paint. You need less paint on the second coat than the first. The squeeze it all on method's maybe not always the best because sometimes I over squeeze. And then I got like way too much paint. We'll see if I manage to squeeze appropriately this time. One homemade latte down, one fancy coffee shop made latte to go. This day is starting off fabulously. Yeah, it's a lavender vanilla latte. I know a lot of places don't carry lavender, especially like Starbucks and stuff doesn't, but like usually the smaller individually owned coffee shops, I'll find it there more often. I love me a lavender vanilla latte. Smells like I'm drinking a candle. Thankfully, it does not taste like I'm drinking a candle. That would be gross. I may 
may have over squeezed a bit. So I'm just going to try to smooth it out. I don't know if any of y'all do that if you ever squeeze it on and then you're like, crap, I put too much on. So I'm going to do my best to. If I hadn't over squeezed, I could be done with this coat already. Now I'm going to spread it all out. And if you really have ever squeezed a lot, right, like you can scoop it up on your brush and like, you know, wipe it off on a paper towel or whatever. There we go. Jinx myself. Yeah, so for those of y'all don't know, if you're new, um, and my sweet husband who just delivered me the bagel and latte, um, the reason he is here is because we work in the same workshop. Um, it's, I think, a pretty fabulous arrangement because we work in the same space without really working together. He does not work for Julie's Woodcrafts. He has his own business. He builds custom arcade machines. They are wicked cool. I am a little biased, but they are. And his company's Monster Arcades. So he builds arcade machines in the workshop. We use similar machinery. Like he'll use the routers, I use the routers. I use the lasers a little more than he does. Um, but he'll, he does have some things on his arcade machines that he uses the laser for. Excuse all the sniffles. I think I'm good on the second coat. Yeah, it's a really great setup because, I mean, obviously, some people think we're crazy, my oldest son included. Like, how in the world can you work in the same space with your spouse all day? Like, it works for us. I know it would not work for every couple. Um, all right, get out your flip flops, and you should have a little dot for the eye on flip. Um, and then the and sign is going to be red. And then the bigger of the two flowers is going to be red. Right, so you've got this smaller flower. It's the flower with the little notches in the end. So those are red. The smaller flower is going to be white. Oh, wait, hey, let's do that real quick. Duh. Because I've already got my brush with white. I got that extra white that I put too much on. And I'm just going to be careful since I'm using this big brush. Again, I'm trying to make sure I'm not going over the edges too much. And if you do, you can always do like a little quick wipe off. It's also seriously not a big deal as sometimes I make it out to be. We'll need a second coat. So we're not going to, I almost forgot about them being white. Um, so we're not going to rinse this foam brush off yet. Yeah, but anyways, I know it's not for everybody. Not everybody could work in the same space as their spouse every day. Like you need a little bit of separation. That whole absence makes the heart grow fonder thing. But for us, it works. I mean, I like spending time with him. He's a pretty great guy. And even though we work in the same space, it's not like we're spending every minute together because we're not actually working in the same business together, right? So he's got all his monster arcade stuff he's working with dealing with his customers and his freight companies and like all those sort of things, right? So it's just, it's pretty awesome now. Works out great for us. All right, get out your red divas. We are going to paint our flip flops and sign and our two larger flowers red. And you'll wanna have some place to squeeze it. So paper plate, like I said, these are the little cutouts from inside of our 2022 graduation sign. So we're like, always have extra of these because we are making a lot of those right now. Grabbing out another one of my sponges. 
And I really like the red with just one coat. It's a pretty vibrant red, but with one coat you can see the wood grain through it and I really like that. So I'm gonna work on making sure I've got like a very good first coat. You know, it covered every place and it smoothed out all the paint lines. Because if I do it well, I would like to just have one coat for my red. So I just like the way it looks. So y'all gotta let me know if you got any great plans for this weekend. We haven't quite worked ours out yet. Probably doing some research and starting to work on our pool. We have this like in-ground vinyl liner pool, nothing fancy, of course came with the house. And we have had to become pool experts because when you own a pool, you just gotta figure it out. And you got pool companies, but nowadays, it's so hard to get a pool company. Like they're so busy and crazy expensive so we needed to replace the liner and like fix like redo some of the floor bottom of our vinyl liner pool because um, the bottom under the liner is just like a sand concrete mix and so we need to like pour some more and trowel it out and anyways I'm not particularly excited about this DIY project but we got the liner in yesterday so I'm going to start doing some research on the best way to kind of redo the pool bottom, like adding the extra sand concrete mixture. Anyways, it's a whole thing that I did not think I was going to become an expert in, and I was okay if I did not become an expert in DIY pool repairs. <laughs> but so many companies did not want to take on this repair, like they just wanted to say like, well we'll just redo the whole pool, like we're not going to just fix the bottom we'll just redo the whole pool. Oh, okay, cool. Like, what's a ballpark for that? Oh, $50,000. <laughs> oh, yeah, so that's not happening. Um, so we're gonna DIY the repairs ourselves. Turns out there's like a huge community and marketplace out there for people who, not just DIY pool repairs, but y'all, there are people who DIY pools, which is like nuts to me. Like rent an excavator, Dig out a hole, pour concrete, put rebar, like crazy. Like obviously I'm a fan of DIY. Hello, Facebook group, Julie's Woodcrest DIY Divas. But this kind of DIY, a little bit different than like putting an entire pool in your backyard. It's nuts to me though that someone's like, you know what, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna build an entire pool myself. All right, on the skinny parts, you see, I'm just, I'm really just dabbing it on. I'm not brushing um, on any of the skinny parts. The only parts where I start brushing is where it is a little bit wider, right? Like on the P, I did that. Making sure if you're getting red on your fingers, don't forget to be wiping it off so then you're not transferring that red paint all over the place. There we go, our little dot. It kind of looks like an apostrophe, uh, but it's actually for this font, it's the dot for the flip. I'm just going to hold it in my fingers and dot it on. There we go. Yeah, so on the bigger pieces of the word, I'll kind of swipe on the red. But all these skinny pieces, I'm just dabbing it on. I 
I mean, I was talking about like exciting weekend plans. <laughs> and then I go into like the whole DIY pool repair thing craziness. Can you tell what's been consuming my week trying to figure out how we're gonna do this and on my off time? I think we might go see a movie. That might be in the plans. There's a drive in theater like about an hour from here that we've gone to before. That we talked about going back to. It's fun. It's over in Center, Alabama for any of y'all close enough. And if you get too much dabbed in one area, after you've gone around and dabbed on other spots, and your sponge goes a little more dried out, you can go back to where you've gotten too much paint, and it'll kind of take it off. All right. Double checking to make sure my first coat looks good, that I haven't missed any spots. Because I'm hoping to just do one coat. I really like this red with one coat. Because it's still super vibrant. But it shows the wood grain. And the blue too looks great with one coat. Assuming your first coat looks decent. Alright, I think I'm going to grab my white flowers. Let's check on my gray flip flops. They're still drying a little bit. Because I obviously went a little heavier over here. But I think they're okay. Um... I don't think they're going to need a second coat, but the white flowers definitely do. White is rarely okay with just one coat. Sometimes when I'm like being extra picky, I'll end up with three coats of the white. It just depends like how much of a perfectionist I'm feeling like this morning. That will be our second coat on the flowers, the white flowers. Wipe your fingers off so you don't end up with white paint on all your other pretty stuff. <laughs> I'm going to set them aside. I think they're going to be okay because they're also going to get a star on top of them. Ooh. Here it comes. A whole bunch of sneezes. <coughs> oh my goodness. All right, so all we have left are our two stars. So you got some gold glitter in one of the little pouches. And like I said, the only thing you had to provide yourself is if you wanted to do the glitter. <coughs> if you wanted to do the glitter, you needed to get some of your own Mod Podge. You did not think that would, or we hadn't had time to test how Mod Podge would do in one of those little pouches sitting in it. Would it still work? You know, that sort of thing. So we did not send Mod Podge. Oh, excuse me, allergies. All right, let me get myself all situated. All right, so grab out your Mod Podge and your glitter. Move some of this stuff out of the way because glitter will get everywhere if it's too close to it. All right, with one of your brushes, if you have another foam handle brush, that's good. If not, you can use one of the other end of your sponges. I'm just using this because I've got to dip down into it. Um, so you're just going to take a little bit of Mod Podge. What's great about Mod Podge is it's a glue and a sealer, so it's both things. Uh, well, hey, look at that. Water-based sealer, glue, and finish. 
Okay. Um, so you're going to put the Mod Podge on here. does not need to be that thick. So just kind of like you're painting it on. Yeah, I am sorry for all the sniffles. Those got to be annoying to listen to. <laughs> All right, so just like you've painted on the Mod Podge. All right, that helps you kind of see how much we've put on. And then you're going to open your little glitter pouch. You're going to want to put it on a piece of paper or something like I've got here. So then you can reuse that. There we go. You can reuse the glitter. So you're just going to sprinkle the glitter all over. Make sure you've got it on all the little corners. It's totally fine, like we said, if you use extra, because we're going to reuse it. So if you've got a second sheet of paper or something, you can transfer this to. I mean, I'm just going to put it on my table, because I don't mind getting glitter on my table. But if you're trying to contain it, which good luck with containing glitter. But if you're trying to, you want like a second sheet of paper to move this to. Sprinkle it off that quickly, right? So just Mod Podge glitter, right? And you're going to do another layer of Mod Podge. This is where it becomes like the sealer for it. Oh, I forgot to mention, I wrote it on the DIY sheet, I'm pretty sure. It needs to be gloss Mod Podge because that's what keeps the, the glitter, keeps the sparkle. If you do like a satin Mod Podge, the glitter is not gonna sparkle as much. Um, I've actually never tried it with a satin, but that's just what I've read. So I've always used gloss Mod Podge over glitter. All right, so it looks like you're putting glue over it, right? You're like, oh my gosh, I've ruined it. No, you haven't. It's gonna dry clear, it'll be just fine. And if you wanna double glitter it, you wanna make sure it's got all that sparkle, Mod Podge, you said, is both a glue and a sealer, so you can use that as a glue, which is, this is what we do for our 2022 graduation signs. We always double coat the glitter. So then you're gonna sprinkle a little more glitter on. Just reusing what came off. There we go. And then you can dump off the excess. Dump off the excess. If you haven't used glitter before now, congrats. You're officially a part of the crafting world. Also, you will continue to see this gold glitter in your house, on your clothes, in your hands, on your face, possibly for the next week. <laughs> there we go. I'm going to then put one more coat. You always want to put a top coat of Mod Podge so it keeps it from flaking off. So we double glittered. Like I said, we didn't have to. We could have just done one coat of glitter, but I can't help myself. Alright, it is going to look white, like you have just put Elmer's glue over your glitter and you have ruined everything. You have not, I promise, it will dry clear. Just give it a minute. Alright, set those out of the way because you won't be dropping stuff on it to get, you know, anything to get stuck on the Mod Podge, so put those away safely. And I think we're ready to start gluing on. Move these 
pieces out of the way until it's their turn to be glued on. Let's grab the round. So we're ready to glue it on. If it's still a little tacky, you can wait a little while. You can grab out a hair dryer. Um, mine is because I went a little too heavy. So I'm gonna take a quick second, discuss amongst yourselves. I'm gonna go use my heat gun at a very good distance so I don't actually burn anything up. But um, I'm gonna just give this a quick little run over so it'll be drier before I start gluing stuff on. And also at this point, if you wanted to second coat anything, you can go back and second coat anything you want. I'm pretty happy with all of mine, um, so I don't feel like I need a second coat on any of them. All right, we're back. We did once over with the heat gun. Made sure it was good and dry before we start gluing on. I think I'm gonna start with Freedom across the top. So you've got your glue in a pouch. Um, so you're gonna wanna squeeze that out on your um, paper plate or whatever you're using there and use one of your remaining sponges and you're gonna do a thin layer across the back. So I just dab it on all over. I mean, it's hard to tell, like you shouldn't see it. It's not real goopy, just enough. Cause otherwise if you have too many goops in there, it's going to squeeze out. All right, so if you look in good lighting, so you do want to be a good lighting, usually a kitchen light works. I always find like kitchen lights tend to be the brightest. You can see the outline for the F. So I'm going to line up the top and then just lay it down from there. You can move it a little bit. Wood glue does not immediately um, like stick, right? Like a super glue or a hot glue. So you've got a little bit of time to kind of adjust it. You want to get it pretty close to the lines when you first set it down because obviously you have to move it too much you're going to leave like the the glue residue so that's why i kind of look at where the top line is and try to line it up from there when i stick it down and then just you know move the the bottom a little bit if needed I 
There we go. And usually you just give it a, a good little push and it's stuck down in the smaller letters. You don't typically have to worry about a weight. The, the ones you have to worry about putting on a weight on to like hold it is there are some of my signs, like if y'all have ever made one of my welcome y'all ones or welcome-ish or welcome hope you like dogs. All of those have like a long piece of wood. Like the welcome-ish has this piece that says depends on who you are. Um, so that being longer, it just can, because of the, the you know type of wood and the thickness of the wood and stuff, can be a little bit warped, like not entirely flat. So those longer pieces, or when you have like a single word that's long, um, those are sometimes the ones that you'll need to put a weight on. And you just want to be careful if you think you're going to need a weight on something, that you don't glue it down then until your um your glues i mean your paint is completely dry because you don't want to put a weight on something if the paint's still tacky so that's something to think about um there's not really anything here that's going to warrant a weight i don't think for, I think I'm going to do the and flip-flops, and then I'm going to put the actual flip-flop on. So grab your and sign, obviously using the skinny end of the sponge, you're just going to put it all around the back of this and sign. But just dabbing it on, you do not want a thick coat. You just want to coat every part of the back, but in a thin layer. All right, giving this a good look. You can see the lines. There we go. Good push down. Now we're ready for our flip. there so I was wiping some of that off because I don't want that squeezing out of the edges. have any of that pre-cut ribbon you did for the craft kit of the month? So I couldn't remember if there was extra or not. Oh, perfect. I will use that. Thank you. So 
one thing I forgot to grab before I started. All right, so we're putting all over the back there. Let's get our, and your, I mean, you'll see by the etched lines, the flip gets pretty close to the edge over here. So that's because the actual flip flops themselves are gonna be pretty close over there. So we're using like a good bit of this round. I like to make my designs take up a lot of the round. If I leave any space not, Covered. It's at the top, so you can add a bow. Ugh, man, sniffly, sniffly. All right, so we're gonna put our little dot. Now, there's no outline for this. So a lot of time for like smaller pieces like that, I just don't design it to be outlined. So you can just put it however you want. There we go. And then blocks. corner of that F was wanting to kind of pop up, so I'm giving it a good push down. If I think it's going to be a problem, I could put some kind of weight on it, but usually with a piece this thin, and it, like I said, it's not real big, once you get the corners to stick, they'll stay down. I'm feeling like I didn't put enough glue on it though, so I'm going to come back and add another layer of glue, especially around the ends. Here we go. There, now I feel like it's really kind of suctioning, sticking down there. So I know I say a thin layer, but if you're going to do a thin layer, you do have to make sure you get it all over. So I don't think I had, a good, had it on the ends there very well. on our locks here. There we go. It's coming together. Yay! Oh, probably want to stick some of those brushes in water if you're wanting to reuse them. A no little junk over here on mine. There we go. All right. Flip flops. You can go ahead and glue the pieces on and then glue the whole flip flop on. I'm going to glue the flip flop on and then add the pieces. Um, if you've still got a little bit of paint, I mean, sorry, glue left in your pouch like if you haven't squeezed it all out you can squeeze it on the back of the flip-flops otherwise if you're using the sponge you can kind of scoop up a better amount because that's obviously a pretty big surface to cover and then i'm going to find my outline for my flip-flops there it is
looks good. All right, so the flip-flop being a larger surface, it's possible you're gonna wanna put something heavy on it to weigh it down. If you need to do that, put something heavy on it, wait 30 minutes or so, and then come back and glue the um, flip-flop pieces on. But I think mine's gonna be good. I'm just giving it a good push down here. Mm. Love that latte. All right. Yeah, I think I'm good. I got a little bit of gold glitter stuck there. Like I said, you're gonna gold glitter everywhere. All right, so now once that's stuck down, um, let's get on our flip-flop pieces. You've got the outlines for them, so you can make sure they go in the right spot. And then, if you just wanna double check, your red flower, the big one, is going to fit down, once these are glued down, kind of fit down in there. kind of sit down inside those um, flip-flops. All right, so that's why we want to make sure we get these as close to the line as possible. So that the flower will fit like it's supposed to. There we go. Y'all, this is coming together. All we gotta worry about after this is the bow, which is super easy. All right, so now we are going to put our flowers on. It should sit down in between your um, little flip-flop, I don't know, they're called laces. What are they? Flip-flop straps. That's what you call them. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and glue that on, but just kind of make sure you've got a sense for how it fits down in there. And I'm just covering the whole back of this with a thin layer of glue. Got a little too much, so I'm wiping some off so we don't have glue seeping out. There we go. And as always, if y'all have ordered the craft kit of the month and something happened, we've been, you know, trying our best of course to make sure we're packing things well and, and all of that but if something happened and you're missing something or a painting exploded just message me we will get that corrected as soon as possible um, send something new out whatever's needed so please just communicate with me um, we will absolutely fix if there are any issues this little strap was Popping up a little, so I gave it an extra little push. 
And then, of course, you can always come back and touch these up. You know, if you, you mess something up along the way, you just have to be careful. They're touching, like, the red up, that you don't get red on the white. Which is why I like the separate pieces. Keep them separate. Makes it easy to paint them. And then glue them together. All right. Now, grab your white flowers. And they're going to go on top of the red flowers at an angle, right, so that the petals are going in different directions. Right, so you're going to line it up so the petals are in between the petals of the red one. Wood glue will be hard in about 30 minutes, um, but it's not like 100% cured. Um, so you definitely wanna, like for 24 hours or something, so definitely wanna let it sit overnight before you decide to hang it up, um, just to make sure. But in 30 minutes, it should be pretty difficult to like move these pieces, maybe even less than that. All right, the last thing to add is our um, gold stars. My Mod Podge has started drying, but it's not 100% dry because I went kind of thick. But you can see already, like I told you, it looked like it was white. Don't worry, it's going to turn clear. Um, so they're still a little damp on top. If you want to, you can wait to add these till later. Of course, for our little live paint today I want to go ahead and add them now so I'm gonna add them carefully they're gonna go right there and they'll be dry in a little bit and if you want to wait till they're a hundred percent dry before you glue yours on that is totally fine so just right in the middle of that white flower And if it is still wet, you have to be careful pushing it down, right? Like you're just kind of grabbing the edge so you don't mess that up. Okay, so the gluing part is done. The last thing we have to do is um, our ribbon to make the bow. We're going to do a simple starburst bow at the top. So you should have gotten three pieces of ribbon. I'm going to go grab my scissors. You will want to grab yours as well. Um, one of these two cut ribbon well, and I can't remember which one. But so you should have gotten three pieces. I've already cut mine in half, right? So on your one long piece, right, fold it in half, cut it in half. And then your second long piece, fold it in half, cut it. And your third long piece, fold it in half, cut it. So you should now have six pieces, two of each of the same type. You're gonna wanna fold them over. I've got pretty good scissors, so I'm gonna double it up. Fold them over this way. We're just gonna cut a little V in them, makes it look cute, right? So just fold it in half like that. I think these are the good ones. And from where the wires are, you're gonna cut into the ribbon so that when you fold it back out, ta-da, that's what you got. So line the other two ends up as well. Fold those in half so all the little four wires are together there. And then from the wires, cutting into the ribbon, you're going at like a 45 degree angle for my math people. Ta-da! So you've got that pair of ribbons now with cute little ends. Let's do the same thing here. Um, there's a variety of patriotic ribbon we have. 
So you don't have the same ones I have here. Um, that y I know y'all got some with like American flags, like stars and stripes kind of on it. And so we have some red and blue polka dots as opposed to blue and white polka dots. But hopefully you love your ribbon. We found some, I found some really great patriotic ribbon and like just got it all. <laughs> so a big variety. All right, so there we go on that one. They both have cute little ends now. And I like to do my solid color, whichever one that you got is solid, um, as my back ribbon. And then the more like fun prints are my top ribbons. So these will be my bottom ones here. You might have gotten like a burlap sort of color one to be your back. There's a lot of variety, so it just depends which one you got. But you should have one that's a solid. So start with those. You'll also want to get out your little bit of twine that you got. Not the thicker jute that you're going to hang it with, but you got a piece of twine that's thinner. You're going to tie your starburst bow with that. All right. So I put my solid color pieces in the back, make an X. And then whatever prints, like these prints have the same color as my back one, so I'm going to put them on top. I like to kind of like spread out my colors, right? So then I'm going to do an X with the blues. Laid on top of it. Then an X with my red chevron. All right, so you've got them all laid out there. You're going to pinch in the middle, right? So I just kind of try to take it here, push in the middle so that it does a good pinch. Let me show you. All right. With your other hand, we are wrapping that around, trying to hold our pinch. If it all comes undone, it's okay. Lay it out, start over again. I've made a lot of these, so... I don't have a problem kind of still like using my extra finger to hold it together, that sort of thing. If you pull it tight and you look at it and you're like, oh, I hate that. Okay, before you untie it, like I don't like that this piece is so much longer than that piece. Well, I've only tied it once, so it's not super tight, so you can pull it through. So do a little bit of that before you're like, oh, I hate it, start all over. All right, so once you're happy with the lengths of them, like you don't feel like you need to pull one through anymore this way or that way, then go ahead, pull it tight, do your second knot. And now, because it's wired ribbon, I mean, you can fold this all around, right? So you can just, bend it, twist it. This is why we use wired ribbon. So however you want to move it around, if you want these to be out wider, if you want those to be out wider, right? Fluff it, do whatever you need to do with it. There is your starburst bow. Ta-da! Isn't that adorable? And you can keep messing with it after you put it on your door hanger. But those are the easiest bows to make. So if you have always hated making bows, get some fun ribbons. The only downside of these, you got to get a couple different ribbons, right? The other ones I do with loops, I just do one type of ribbon. So you got to get a couple different types. Make yourself a starburst bow. And it's nice, too, when the, the pieces in the back are a little bit longer than the pieces in the front. So if you wanted to, you could even, like, let's decide, I'm like, hey, that's a little too long. Even after the bow's tied, I can come back and shorten this a little bit. So I just cut another angle. Okay, now my blue can be seen a little better, right? So you can always go back and adjust things like that too. That's why I love that bow. So you are gonna hang the thick or tie the thicker jute through the two holes here. So you'll have something to hang it from. And then I don't have the thicker jute here. <laughs> it's over some other table. Then we're going to tie this bow on just by sticking it through one of the holes at the top. 
and then we are tying it in a knot. All right, that is all you gotta do. And my gold glitter stars are almost dry. Yeah, once you get this on here, you know, mess with it more if you want to, move it around, whatever you need to do. I hope you love yours as much as I love mine. I am in love with this. I think it looks awesome. Everything's stuck down pretty good. I'm gonna keep it flat just to make sure the glue has time to cure. Um, got a little bit extra glitter there. No problem with extra glitter. But anyways, I hope you guys love it. This is our craft kit of the month for May. So I will be, um, in a week, I will drop the June craft kit of the month. Uh, so you'll get to see what that one is for my subscribers. You'll get to see what you're going to get. You haven't subscribed yet. On the 20th of this month is when I do the new one. So you can, on the 20th of this month, get yours and become a subscriber subscribers get 15 percent off the 34 dollars price for the craft kit um but that's it we are done y'all i hope you love this it is perfect for memorial day july 4th labor day i mean you could leave it up all summer if you want to you could switch it out to a summer one um and then put it back up for july 4th you know whatever you want to do but i hope you guys love it please share pictures in the facebook group I want to see your finished one, especially if you decided to switch some colors up or wanted to do it a different way. I would love to see that. Um, but we are done for today. So um, I will see you guys next time. Um, hopefully next time I will be um, in my special little paint spot. So in the house. We have a third bedroom that's not really kind of used for anything right now. The kids are grown, so um, I am taking a corner of that. I'm going to put up a little paint table, put a sign on the wall behind me. Uh, we glittered, of course, a Julie's Woodcraft sign. Um, so hopefully the next live paint you see me will be in my cute little room in my house where I'm going to be doing all my live paints from instead of in this uh, ugly workshop. So Anyways, hopefully next time you'll see me in that cute little spot. But I hope you guys loved our craft kit of the month today. Um, and that's it. Y'all have an awesome weekend. Thanks for joining me. Paint fingers. Bye.